the That's Emperor Vespasian and the Emperor Titus, the right, had Christians in their household. The Gospels the can be timed between gospel. 70 to 90 AD. The true so there. Of the okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm just finishing. Oh, okay, he's not letting, he doesn't want this information out there. So we can bring it here. And um, the other thing mentioned was, and by the way, I just want to say the fact that if you don't know anything, feel please feel comfortable to say, like, I don't know this. Do you don't have to make up answers on the spot, and I feel the same as well, right? Okay, okay yeah. So if I don't know anything, I'm happy to say I don't know this. Okay, you're gonna say I'm not going to make up something on the spot, because I don't think that's fair on you, me, or anyone watching, right? So yeah, sure. So you mentioned um, turning the other cheek and you mentioned um, love thy neighbor as you love yourself, right? And all of these principles in the New Testament. Now, what I'm saying is, the, the background of what was happening when the Gospels were written was there was a Jewish revolt happening, right? Against Rome. Please, can you talk a little bit about the Jewish revolt and what was happening? The so Jewish the 67 AD Jewish revolt. Okay, so... What is your, sorry, what no, no, is, just, I, your I just want, I'm I'm, to okay, so we're going to talk about the history of the Gospels, right? Okay. So I want to give the full context. Yeah. What's happening in Jerusalem, what's happening in Rome, and the history of the Gospels. So I want you to talk about what was happening in Jerusalem in the year 67 AD. Okay, okay, okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what we do know, 70 AD, the mm -hmm. Second Temple. Yeah. Right? We know that the Second Temple was destroyed. Yeah. So... Um, I personally believe um, that when we look at Matthew 24, there's a prophecy. So I believe the Gospel of Matthew um, came, was very early, was so I believe it was written before. Uh, so what time? Before 17. Before 17. Yeah, that's the book of, book of Matthew. Okay. So there's a prophecy in um, the book of Matthew that the second temple will be destroyed. Yeah. And that one stone will not be laid upon another. That prophecy has come true. Obviously, during that time, um, you know, Israel was occupied yeah. by the Romans. Yeah. Um, and so, obviously, you know, there would have been a whole kind of kerfuffle. Yeah. Um, and obviously, it was that, 20, that, that uh, culminated in the Second Temple, the destruction of the Second Temple. Yeah. 70 AD. Yeah. So, I believe almost like a quarter of Roman army's reserves was used against Jerusalem to destroy and level the temple, right? So it was like 25% approximately of the Roman army was used in this war, okay? So this was a massive war happening in the background of early Christianity, right? And do you know, um, so it was anti-Roman figures in Jerusalem that were responsible for this war, right? So there was like a movement of Jews, like um, zealots, right? Zealots who were fighting the Roman Empire, right? So what I'm saying is, if it can be established that there is a link... Oh, okay, first thing I want to mention is, what is... The Romans have gone in, destroyed Jerusalem, but they can't destroy the mentality of the revolt, right? Because that's psychologically there still, amongst the Jewish people. If Romans... Would it not be in the interest of the Roman government at the time to pacify the Jewish revolt by spreading propaganda. Do you agree or not? I'm trying to work out what... Okay, would it be in the interest of the... I, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm discussing the history of the Gospels. It's all related to the history of the Gospels. Okay. If there's a massive war happening where 25% of the Roman army's forces are being used, right? Would it not be in the interest of the Roman authorities to spread propaganda to fight the psychology of the enemy. Okay, so I know there's books like the like Sun Tzu probably wasn't around at the time. Sure. Um, the Art of War. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, um, the um, the uh, Tiberius and Pontius Pilate were thinking along those lines. I, I, sure. I, at the end of the day, yeah. if you're saying there was propaganda, yeah. um, or if there is an argument about propaganda potentially used, yeah. then that needs to be found amongst the first century Roman historians. Sure. Yeah. So, um, so that's my question. Yeah. Um, so, so, can, can you quote any, any first century Roman historians that were aware of propaganda sure. before 70 AD? So I'm saying the Roman historians 
if they are if the Romans Okay, if the Roman if the Roman Empire is at war with sorry, I'll just Okay. So if the Roman Empire is at war with the Jewish revolt, right? With the revolters in the Jewish um, diaspora, they why would the Roman historians the Roman historians would naturally be biased towards the Roman Empire, right? What's your name again, buddy? Tay. 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 Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. So the Roman historians would naturally be biased towards the Roman Empire, right? Okay. If there's a revolt happening. Yeah. So, are you familiar with the emperors of Spain and Titus? Yep. Sorry. Okay. So there's Nero, and then yep. when Nero passes away, he's the end of a long lineage of emperors from the Julius Caesar dynasty, right? Nero is not, not a friend of ours. Sure, sure, okay. sure. So when he passed away, he um, back then church and state were the same thing, right? Okay. So when you became Roman Emperor, Emperor, you had to justify it divinely that you are the Roman Emperor, right? Okay. So there's a year of four emperors, where there's four emperors vying for the throne. Um, the one that ends up winning is Vespasian and Ty uh, Vespasian, right? The Emperor Vespasian. The Emperor Vespasian was the one responsible for demolishing Jerusalem. And he was the one responsible for leading the, Ju the Roman army against Judea, right? Against the Zealots. So he has the context of what's happening in Jerusalem at the time. He would be privy to early Christianity blossoming in Judea, right? So the Emperor Vespasian um, when he goes and he's almost finished with the war, he's going into the temple, the most prominent rabbi of the time, Rabbi Ben Yohanan, I believe, he said to Emperor Vespasian, um, I, can give you the, I can give you the exact reference, so he basically, give, if you want to know, but he says that it has been prophesied according to the Old Testament that a mighty king will come and destroy the temple. So he's Mighty giving king yeah. come and destroy the temple. Yeah. So that's okay, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah. So so he's kind of alluding to the fact of the space and being a messianic like figure, right? Um do you agree or not? If he's quoting stuff like that. So that Vespasian is fulfilling Old Testament prophecies. That's your point. Right? Yeah, that's the point. I think you're gonna struggle with that. Sure. Do you, okay. know, okay. do you know why? Because um, so you're effectively saying he was what the promised Messiah? No, no, I'm not saying he was the promised Messiah. I'm saying he was being he was being made a figure that was prophesied in the Old Testament, right? So, what, so, so, are you trying to say that Vespasian, like this, uh, this kind of figure, like um, Vespasian, can be found in, um, in the Old Testament? That's what the rab most prominent rabbi at the time was saying. I disagree with that. You know why? Uh, it's in the Talmud. Okay, so I, I don't. Talmud is, is, sure. not, is not Torah. Sure. Okay. Okay. Let's. Okay. You disagree with that, so that's, right? That's, but, that's, that's, but I'm saying. I'm saying. Do you agree that it's recorded in the Talmud that the most prominent rabbi at the time was saying Vespasian is a messiah, is like a figure that was um, mentioned in the Old Testament Tate, as a mighty king. The, Tate, the, the yes. mighty king is so that wouldn't have any relevance with any. Um, any, I would say, ardent follower of Judaism. Sure. I tell you why, because this concept of the mighty king, yeah. right, is um, found prophetically in the book of Daniel. Okay. So I you, think it was Daniel he might have quoted. He may have quoted him, yeah, but, yeah. okay, so, so have you read the book of Daniel? Yeah. But, I mean, we're talking about the context, right? So, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, context, so, yeah. so, it's not just him that says this. There's also Eusebius. Eusebius. Are you familiar with Eusebius? Yeah. yeah. Eusebius, yeah. Um, Tacitus, yeah Tacitus. And Josephus. Yeah. They all are pointing to Vespasian as being a figure that's mentioned in the Old Testament and as a figure that is fulfilling multiple prophecies in the Old Testament. Even though they're not Jewish, I know they're Roman historians, yeah. right? Not Josephus. They are appropriating the Jewish religion to be in line with what's happening in Rome and the Roman events. Do you know why that's not possible? Why? With respect. Um, so if you read Daniel chapter 9, yeah. verse 25 to 26. Sure. You, have you read it? You I probably have read it, yeah. So it's the story of um, the Son of Man, right? No. No, no, no. Okay. No, so, sure, sure. Okay, so it says, um, now, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to and to build Jerusalem yeah. unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, 
and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again. And the wall, even in troublous times. Now this is the key I want you to pay attention to. Sure. It says in verse 26, and after three score and two weeks, do you know what three score means? Three score as in no, please, no. Okay. Do you know what score means? Score, yeah. yeah. So, a little bit I mean the context, right? So I'm, uh, maybe I can't remember from know. the top of my head. You don't know what yeah, score, sure, score Okay, score means 20 years. Okay. 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 Three score is 60. Okay. okay. Um, so, and after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off? Mm -hmm but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary sure. and the end thereof shall be with the flood on and unto the end of the war desolations are determined mm -hmm. so was Vespian alive before the destruction Daniel. of the second no. temple oh Vespian was basically yeah he was responsible for the army okay. that led yeah exactly the so, so, fight into so this is the thing so it goes against messianic prophecy Okay, I agree. I agree. I'm not disputing that. I'm saying, I'm not saying the Roman or historians so, were right in doing what they did in appropriating the Jewish religion by saying Vespasian is a messianic-like figure. I'm not. And by the way, just to mention, the rabbi I was talking about was Yohanan ben Zakkai. Oh, okay. okay. So there's another one that's quite well known. He would have said that. I think his name's um, Rabbi. Um, I've got his name, Rabbi Shumi. Okay, but what I'm saying is. I don't agree with the Roman historians appropriating the figure of Vespasian to be a some sort of messiah according to the Old Testament. But I'm saying there is a climate in Jerusalem where the Roman historians and the most prominent rabbi at the time Rashi, are, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. The, um, the rabbi, uh, there's a rabbi called Rashi, rabbi... Um, yeah, he's quite famous. Rashi is a rabbi. Yeah. Um, his name, his full name is Solomon ben Isaac. Okay, okay. But I'm saying there's a context there where the Roman historians and the most prominent rabbi at the time are trying to make Vespasian look like he was divinely, he had a divine right to go into the temple and destroy it, okay? That's all I'm saying. I'm not okay. saying it was right or wrong. Okay, that's so, interesting. Sorry. Sure. But yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so there's that happening in the background, right? Yeah. Um, why are the Romans at war with the Zealots in the first place? Because they they want they find the Torah Orthodox Jews there very difficult to deal with. They don't integrate with the Empire, they don't marry into the Empire, they eat kosher food, right? They practice the Old Testament laws. They they're not like willing to integrate with Rome in that way, right? So there's a background there of the Romans find these guys very strict, they're too Torah Orthodox, and they're not integrating with Rome, and we're at war with them. Okay. So we're going to make our emperor, like one of our leading generals who becomes emperor, we're going to appropriate their religion, make Vespasian into a messianic-like figure, right? Like, not the messiah, I'm not saying the messiah, but like a messiah. So make Vespasian into a messiah-like figure, and kind of push back on this Torah orthodoxy. So there's a climate there of that, do you agree? So no, I, 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 I think that, um, so the, I, I think the relevance of those events yeah. to the promised Messiah and, yeah. and, and, and what the Bible describes as a mighty king. Yeah. Um, I don't see um, for any, I, I would say even you know, Orthodox Jews today, yeah. um, certainly not for Messianic Jews, that that has any, any way, shape or form a connection um, to the prophesied Messiah. Now, there were, like the Bible says in Matthew 24, sure. you know, there will be many false Christs yeah. that will come. Mm -hmm. Many false Christ saying that, hey, I'm the Christ. Um, and also, when you when you study it well, many uh, false imitators. And, 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 you know, Jesus warned about this. In fact, one of the first things he said about the second coming um, and, and, his, and his messianic return, yeah. the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, um, was what he said to the disciples was, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. And so, um, 
even if it was the case where you have you know a small group of um, Jewish uh, individuals, uh, groups of uh, open communities, some small uh, cohorts of the Jewish community, uh, looking at Bastasian uh, as um, somewhat more than just the most prominent rabbi at the just, time. Yeah, just, yeah just, the, sure. just as a mere man. Um, at the end of the day, he's clearly, according to messianic prophecy, according to scripture, yeah. nowhere near um, like okay. the anti like, like the. Um, so I'm Protestant presenting Islam. I'm presenting a bit of a paradigm shift, so it's going to take a while to like explain the whole thing. If that's okay with you, and then I, I'm, it's all related to the history of the Gospels, right? So then, meanwhile, in Rome. Right. So, what's happening in Rome? Are you familiar with the Roman pagan gods? Yeah, so we yeah, have like gods like we have gods like Serapis, yeah, so who is like a fusion Egyptian Roman god, they, right? They, but you have to remember, they took gods from all over the world. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, I'm saying they have a god called Serapis, who's a fusion of like Osiris and like one of their Roman gods. So that's a way to kind of integrate the Egyptians. You have the god Myth, um, the figure Mithra. Mithra. So Mithra is kind of um, has elements of Zoroastrianism there. Right, like the Persian thinking, and it's kind of integrating that with Rome. So Mithraism is kind of integrating the. I know, I know, Persian, where, you, I know yeah. where you're going. I know where yeah. you're going. You're effectively trying to say um, that there has been influence from, you know, for example, Egypt. Uh, but the point is this. Yeah. The point is this. I'm just trying to paint no, a no, picture no, of Jerusalem, it's and I'm trying to paint a picture of Rome, and I'm trying to link everything together, and yeah. I'll explain how it links. Yeah. So, yeah. so I know that some of these gods yeah. um, apparently. Um, sort of imitate the incarnation. Yeah. But, but, Mithra's but, birthday is yeah, 25th yeah, yeah. of December to 6th January. I but I'm not going to go into that. No, I'm but, not, no, but I'm it's not fine going because, going because you see, yeah. the issue you're going to have with that yeah. is that Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yeah. he had followers, yeah. he had disciples, yeah, I agree. Okay? Um, and he had Messianic Jews. Yeah. In fact, Messianic Jews were the first followers of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Can I ask you about but, Simon Zeller? But, but, yeah. but, but, but the difficulty you're going to have. Yeah. Is you're kind of looking at it from like a sort of um, the, the, this this point you're making would yeah. make sense. You're kind of you're kind of framing it in a way where it probably would um, probably apply to maybe a Gentile in another country who heard about Jesus um, and then somewhat got influenced by the paganism of Rome. But actually, actually, we have Messianic Jews just like Jesus himself was a Jew, yeah. right? That. Um, yeah. um, 25,000 manuscripts. So we've got a lot of evidence to show mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ, right, was alive, was real, he died on the cross, was crucified. Even the fact that you brought up Rome is quite interesting. Yeah. And I'll just let you come in after this. Yeah. We know that Tacitus, yeah. one of, in fact, he, he, I would say he was the leading Roman historian. In fact, to understand anything about Rome, you go through Tacitus. Well, most, mostly you, you go and refer to his work. So he wrote in his book, The Annals. You know The Annals? Yeah. Are you talking about reference to like Christians pre-40 AD? No, so I'm talking about... Oh, no, not pre-40. No, sorry, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Carry on, carry on. Carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, I can come in no, a bit, right? I'm, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, because Tacitus knew yeah. Pontius Pilate. Right? Yeah. So that would be pre-48 AD. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then also... It's interesting, sorry, just to side the point, just, just on that, just, quickly. Just, just really quickly. Sure. I, 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 honestly, I'll let you come in. Okay. I, so basically, Tacitus, in his writing, referred to, to pre-70 AD. Yeah. And also afterwards, because the Christians, um, you know, some of them were, you know, they had children and all that. So there was generations of them. So yeah, yeah. the point is this, <coughs> is that Tacitus states very, very clearly that the, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth was crucified. He was secular, as you know. He I, I, wasn't I don't a Christian. Okay. Oh, you didn't know that? Uh, no, I didn't. I, I don't. Can you historically verify that this was written by Tacitus, that Jesus was crucified? It says it in his book, The Annals. I mean, unless you can say to me yeah. that there are no works. No, 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 I'm not saying that. Okay. But, okay, but can, can, I, can I come in? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. sure, sure. So I just wanted to go back to my original point and then I'll link it yeah, to yeah, all of this as well. So then there's also, I mentioned the god Serapis, who's a fusion um, Greek Roman god. 
there's a god uh, Mithra, uh, uh, Mithra as a figure, yeah. who is a fusion Persian yes. Roman figure. <coughs> um, you also have figures like um, the god Apollo, right? Yeah. So the god Apollo is the sun god, he's the god of um, arts, and he's the god of light, I believe, as well. Nero, Nero was very heavy into Apollo, because Nero, you know, he used to do these performances and stuff, he used to go on a mad one. Nero, yeah. So Nero was very heavy on the sun god Apollo, right? When Vespasian and Titus come in, they are also very heavy on the sun god Apollo, right? Okay. Their, their house symbol is the dolphin and the anchor. The dolphin represents Apollo's sacred animal, and the anchor represents the ring Zeus gave to Leto as a form of proposing, because Apollo is the son of Zeus and Leto, right? So what I'm saying is, the climate at the time was very heavily, of Roman pagan worship was very heavily skewed towards the figure Apollo. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Okay, Are you aware so, of that? Or? No, I am. Yeah, okay. yeah, no, it's interesting how you're bringing the sort of Egyptian mythology. Okay. mythology so, but you see, the thing with Jewish communities, they were, yeah. they were very clear about their creed. The Lord thy God is one. Deuteronomy yeah. 6, verse, I believe. Yeah. So, what? So, so, so they, would, they weren't, they, like, like you were saying earlier, yeah. your own words, they wouldn't integrate. Yeah. And the reason why is because of the paganism. Yeah. And even though Rome wanted them to integrate, they weren't integrating, right? Okay, so then the influence of all that stuff yeah. couldn't, couldn't necessarily be. Uh, wouldn't overtake, you know, the, 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 the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. It couldn't influence. Okay. It couldn't influence the the, the, the the gospel narrative. What I'm saying is, the figure Apollo is a sun god, right? He's the son of the god Zeus. He's known as the son of like God yeah. in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And so we is, have the figure of. Um, so. There yeah. Is, and, and the thing is, Tyrus. Yeah. See, you're you're trying to link that with. The Jewish Messianic prophecies. Yeah, yeah. And, and how it's influenced, for example, even the Gospels, right? Yeah. And it's going to be very difficult for you to do that because there isn't any evidence of a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth mm -hmm. abdicating and necessarily, I mean, Judas obviously killed himself, hung himself. Yeah. But he According to the Gospels. Kept, yeah, he still kept the deceit. He killed himself two different ways. Two different ways. Yeah. No, 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 they're two different angles. Okay. So you got to read it very carefully, two different angles. Okay. But the point is this, that when we look at, um, when we look at the, when we look at the gospel narratives, what we see is, um, we see uniformity, mm -hmm. we see all the disciples sticking to their roles, yeah. they're dying for their faith, all of them pretty okay. much died besides John, we know sure. he was exiled in Patmos. Sure. So, so it's going to be very difficult for you to find a disciple that was influenced by Egyptian mythology. Or, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, no, you're not, you're not getting and, the point. No, 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 but the connection between paganism influencing the gospel narrative. It's, you can't find it. There I is can no find connection. It. I can find it. I'll give it to you unless now. You I'll give it to you now. I'll give it to you now. Okay. okay so you, you have, you have, disciple. are you aware of saying, no, I'm not saying the paganism influenced the disciples. I'm saying the paganism influenced Rome. And I know. Uh, okay, so so we, under Vespasian. Fact. Okay, that's okay. Fact. Under it's fact, right? Yeah. So under Vespasian. Under Vespasian. Okay, okay, okay. If okay, so the Roman Empire is at war with the Jews, right? Like some of the Jews, some of the Jews in the Jewish revolt. The Roman Empire is at war with the Jews. Okay, if I can, if I can make a link between the Roman Empire and the Roman Emperor's household and Christianity. Are you going to agree with me that Christianity ca could possibly be a form of propaganda against the Jewish revolt? No. I, Why not? I, Why not? I, I want, I, um, so, if the Roman Emperor's household yeah. can be definitively linked to early Christianity, and that Rome, the Roman Empire is using 25% of their force in, against Jerusalem. I, see, I, I know where you're going. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to tell me the, the early Christianity is not going to be influenced no, by so, Roman bias? So when you say early Christianity, yeah. you have to understand who the early Christians were. Yeah. So what's your source text to understand the early Christians? What's your source text? Okay, so I'm, I'm talking about like Saint, people like Saint Santa Don Matilla, um, Clement of Rome. I'm talking about these figures of this time period. Okay, so 
If we talk about, okay, so you're talking obviously about like 70 to 90, 80. Okay, so what? A, so why weren't you? Why aren't you looking at the gospels? Why aren't you looking? At because, them? correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of people can time the gospels to between 70 and 90 AD. That is a timing that works with scholarship, right? To be fair, I thought you were going to say some crazy number, but at least you. But yeah, so yeah, yeah. so so actually, actually, the gospel. Um, uh, could be, de I believe, dated early. But I mean, the figure I'm proposing, 70 to 90 AD, is that unreasonable according to you? Depends which book. All four Gospels. No, not all four. Okay, in that, no, but you're you, talking I, about I that range, mean, roughly that range, 65, okay, it's, like it's, around. It's, not, un it's, not, it's unreasonable. not unreasonable. It's not unreasonable, right? Okay. I would stretch it to 60. So. Okay, sure. But that still would include the Jewish revolt. Okay, so, okay, you have um, the four Gospels are being written around the time of Vespasian and Titus, yeah? Okay. There's so no persecution of early Christians under Vespasian and Titus. No definitive proof of any persecution of early Christians under Vespasian and Titus. I'm not disputing the fact that Christians were killed under Nero, which was before, right? Christians were killed under Nero. Christians were killed under Domitian, who was after Vespasian and Titus. But where's the persecution of Christians under Vespasian and Titus? Okay, okay. So, where does Tacitus come into the equation? I just want to see where we are. Yeah. Okay. I, I can pull up. I can because, pull it up. I can pull it up. Okay. Because and where does Pliny the Younger come in? So Eusebius. I, I, I can. I can find because, the quotes. When, when you start looking yeah. at when you start looking at those okay. figures, uh, like Tacitus, yeah. Pliny the Younger. Yeah. Tacitus is, and you need to look at why did Tacitus write to Tiberius. Because the problem was, like, um, you know. The problem was, was that these Christians yeah. were, like, there was a lot of wrong, like you were saying that um, Rome was fully pagan, and I said to you, quickly, they're not all of Rome. And I say that, what I say that as the reason why is because we know that, yeah. that Ro Romans were converting to Christianity. Christianity. Yeah. So, so, for example, the business of selling meat that the, they used to bless to the gods yeah. was the sales volume now was declining yeah. so they weren't making as much money and Tacitus was like what do we do with these Christians Tiberius what do we do and and one of the, one of the things that they said um, and one of the things Tiberius agreed to do because he, he hated Christians as well yeah Tacitus hated Christians as well what did he agree to do do you remember so I, I just want to no, 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 I know you're going to respond sure, sure. but do you remember what he agreed to do in what context? What Tiber what Tiberius, the Tiberius agreed to do with no, no. Okay, so so what he what Tiberius agreed with Tacitus to do was to to um, to basically capture Christians yeah. and force them to confess yeah. that they do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth anymore. Okay. So can, can, can I, I, I'm, 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 okay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, okay. You know, so, I wanna, I I'm just trying to show you that sure. this culture of persecution to Christians was so great. Yeah. I mean, the it's, amount... It's a smoke screen. No, no, you thinking, you're thinking that, yeah. you're thinking, okay, well, under Vespasian, you know, blah. I'm saying it's but, a smoke screen under Vespasian and Titus. I'm not disputing the persecution of Christians. I'm saying Eusebius, I'm, I'm to to yeah, sure, sure, sure. So Tertullian expressly denies in that Vespasian was a persecutor, right, of early Christians. Lactantius knows of no persecution between Nero and Domitian. No, so he's talking about there's no persecution going on under Vespasian and Titus. Vespasian. Eusebius expressly expressly asserts Vespasian. that Vespasian did no Vespasian. harm to Christians. Tag, tag. Yeah, sure. Vespasian's too high level. He's too high level. No, they're talking right. about there's no, no, no harm no, I know, I know. being implemented by them. I know. Yeah. Tag. You know how it works. If yeah. you know the Ro if you study the Roman structure. Yeah, yeah. That's not necessarily how it worked. Like I'm Nero, not... Nero, Nero, he was pretty bad. You know, yeah, yeah. you do have emperors that would force um, uh, rules down. And they would force sure. um, certain decrees, sure. like you know, like Nero did, burn yeah. all the Christians. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? But the vast majority of the time, yeah. right? It was the governors. Yeah, but I'm it saying the from the top, from the top. Yeah. I'm talking about the top here. Yeah. I'm yeah, not talking yeah. about like what but happens on the lower levels. They didn't. To be, let me be honest with you. They didn't care. It was the governors that were doing the persecuting. No, but I'm saying there's no orders from the top coming down like there was in Nero that, that of persecution of early Christians. And I'm, yeah. and I'm saying also that 
um, that doesn't necessarily imply or infer okay. that persecution wasn't happening. Okay. Because so uh, we have loads of like is name me a martyr. Name me a martyr under those two emperors. Which ones? Vespasian and Titus. Vespasian and Titus. Okay, so we're talking about seventy to ninety AD. Seventy to ninety AD. I mean, there was a bunch. There was a bunch. There was then give me a name. No, but no, but that's not how it works. That's not how it works because. Give me a name. No, if there was a bunch, you're saying there's I mean, a bunch. Give me say, a name. Well, you could say Stephen. I mean, you could say Stephen. You know, influenced by you know the the Roman culture. You know, he was stoned to death. It's okay. If you, it's, no, fine, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. No, okay. That's but, one martyr. A legitimate one. Stephen and, was he martyred under Vespasian and Titus? So he was. So why are you giving me that name? No, but he was martyred before 17 AD. Yeah, but I'm talking about under Vespasian and Titus. I just said to you that under Nero there was martyrs. So I'm saying, give okay, me a yeah. martyr under Vespasian yeah, and Titus. So, Definitive martyr under Vespasian yeah, but and that's Titus. Not how it, that's not, so no, but I'm saying if you can't, I'm happy for you to go home and research <laughs> this. But I'm saying under Vespasian and Titus, there's no definitive martyr, right? Under Vespasian and Titus, there that is the period I am proposing the Gospels was written. Say that though. That's the thing. That's my point. It's like saying, it's like saying. Um, who died under? And I know this is. No, I'm not trying to no, put you on the spot. No, 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 I'm no, saying, no, you're I'm not saying, me yeah, on the yeah, spot. Yeah. No, because I, I, I can easily respond to that. It's not yeah. difficult. Sure. Um, you could easily say, okay, under this emperor, yeah. name a name a martyr. Under that emperor, okay. name a martyr. What you have to realize is, you, you have to understand how they deemed Christians, how they looked at Christians. Yeah. Christians were like the poo on someone's shoe. Yeah, okay. So they didn't record so their why is, hold on, hold on, hold on. They didn't record their names. They so, didn't in fact what you also have to realise, which you don't know Ty, which which I can tell. Okay. Uh, you know, you haven't looked into Christian like what Christians went through, which you I'm sure you will do after this debate. Sure. Right? What you what you don't realise is that the Christians during that time had to live underground. Okay, so you're saying so, all so of this. So no, 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 can, wait, I, can on, I come in? Can I come in? Because you're, 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 you're making a lot of points. No, okay. because you know you're, you're you're saying name a name a martyr during. This I, that, that isn't. A, I'm not holding you to that. No, I'm just saying. No, no I know. You're I'm saying. Just, you're saying. I'm just making, you're, I'm just clarif- you're giving. You're I'm giving. Just clarifying. I'm letting it go. Don't worry. Sure. But I'm just clarifying the point that what you're going to see vast majority of the time with these emperors yeah. is because they lived underground. Yeah. yeah. Because they had to be out of the public eye, yeah. right? And because the culture wasn't conducive to uh, this messianic Christianity, yeah. right? They, 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 nobody knew, like, let's be honest. Okay, you okay. couldn't find a martyr even if you tried. Okay, okay. So why is Unless Vespasian's, you know. why is Vespasian's granddaughter a Christian? I haven't got a problem with. You're just saying. Culture, you're just saying. I'm saying you're just saying I'm, now. Okay, I'm can saying, I speak? Okay, you're saying there's this culture of persecution. They're looking like dirt under their shoes, right? To the Roman pagans, right? But Vespasian, the emperor's granddaughter, is a Christian. Saint Domitilla. Domitilla, have you heard okay, of her? It's a bit like Constantine, though. He was an emperor, wasn't he? No, we're talking about way before Constantine. Why no, are you bringing no, in Constantine? No, no, but the point so is I'm there, saying there's always going to be. Oh, I'm saying your this whole tradition. This whole tradition is smoke screening. Wait, l- let me let me come in here. You're so this whole Vespasian tradition, as... this whole martyrdom tradition, is smoke screening the the period so, under Vespasian and Titus, where there's no persecution, so to the you, level of like the other periods. So, are you, where, so, are so, are so you hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me make my point. So. I know you're scared. Okay, so <laughs> scared under what? 70 to 90 your point, AD. Your point doesn't even make no, sense. Why am I not allowed to speak? Why am I not allowed to speak? Tight. Can I make? Your can I speak? Can I speak? <laughs> can you? Can you? Can you? Let me speak. You're scared Vespasian. now. Okay, yeah. So I'm talking about under Is Vespasian. It, I'll be honest. That's like one. Okay, of okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Okay. Under Vespasian and Titus. There is nowhere near, anywhere near as much persecution as there was under Nero and after during Domitian, right? Okay, so how many were persecuted after this place? Yeah, I'm not denying that there was. But hang on, hang on, hang you don't on. Have can, any I, can, I, can I make my point? Can I make my point? You're worried. You You're worried. Facts. No, no, he's stressed, guys. No, okay. You, so explain. Okay, explain, hang on. Okay, explain. let me explain. Give some let facts me explain. Figures. I'll give some facts. Okay. Come on, be objective. Saint Domitilla, right? Is recognized by the Catholic tradition and by the Orthodox tradition as being a martyr, right? She is the granddaughter of the Emperor Vespasian. So she is a Christian in the imperial household. Yeah? So you're saying that Christians were like dirt under the Roman pagan shoes, right? But how can... Wait, did you the... say she was a martyr? Yeah, she was a martyr. Yeah. It's recognized in the church tradition. You can look it up. Okay, good. Good. okay. so how is the Emperor's granddaughter? And actually, she's the Emperor Titus's niece. So the Emperor Titus's niece is a Christian. According to the church tradition, 
and you're telling me that Christians are persecuted to such a level where that's not impossible. So, so, so once again, yeah. once again, you've taken, you've taken like an obscure, you've taken one martyr. You haven't done the. I'll just, give you another one. Wait, no, no, okay, sure. So, okay, you have many. You, you know a few, which is good. Okay. But the thing is, right, is you're taking um, obscure martyrs who have. They're not obscure. They're very important to the early church. No. Okay. okay. So. You're taking obscure, with respect to, to those who died in Christ, sure. martyrs. Okay. You're overlooking, right? You're overlooking what the Bible makes very, very clear of the treatment of Christians, what they went through. Have the Roman. The early Christians. Yeah. You have the, um, uh, the obviously the uh, Pharisees of the time against. You know uh, the underground church yeah. of the time. So, and, and that's the thing. You have to realize. The charger is not working. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You send the one. They were underground. Now, your point about. Um, Can I come in a bit? Right? Hold on a second. Your, your point about. Um, you said the, the granddaughter of Titus. Yeah. I, I did Tell actually know that. I did. I did um, come across that, which is interesting. Yeah. You brought that up. I, did, I was looking at that the other day, which is interesting. Okay. But the point, the point, the, 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 the thing that... It's the niece of Titus, right? The granddaughter of Aspasian, niece of Titus. Okay. So the, the bit that I'm, the bit that I don't, I'm trying to work out the relevance. I'll give you the, the relevance. The, yeah, and you can give the relevance in it. But what, what, it sounds like you're, and I actually caught what you said. You said that, you're kind of trying to say that the martyrdom was hyped. You're kind of trying to say like the martyrdom was hyped in a way, yeah. which I just cannot, cannot agree with. I don't think the martyrdom was hyped. Um, now, we know, um, we know, sorry, sorry, sorry. We know that it, things got so bad that by the time Constantine came, yeah. And people say, that's 400 oh, years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 300 years later. Yeah, that's fine. But uh, by, by the time that he came, mm -hmm. I mean, it was a well-known fact that for the, for the underground church, for the underground uh, Messianic Jews at the time, life was beyond, beyond easy. I'm not denying it that. Was, it, was, it was hell. I'm, I'm denying the fact that there was martyrdom going on well, under well, Vespasian and Titus. I'm not denying it. anything else. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but, so but hang, on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. The martyrdom during Vespasian. Okay, and you're, but you, you, just said, you just said St. Thomas. Thomas. Sure. I'm sure. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'll be right. quiet. Okay. What, what's missing from your um, 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 question, from your inquiry or your point? Yeah. Facts and figures. So, so, first of all, you 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 um, played down the impact of Santa Domitilla, right? By saying she's an obscure martyr. No, actually, actually, the fact is, down. the fact is that Domitian, the Emperor Every Domitian, the Emperor seen. Domitian, did not have an heir, right? He didn't have an heir. He promised Domitilla that her two children will be the next Roman emperors. He gave that commitment to Domitilla. So this Christian woman, her two children are next in line to be Roman Emperor in the first century AD. This is all I, this is all point? true. So I, no, no, but do you agree? What's do you agree? Point? Do you agree? Ty, Ty, you're, you're, I'm, showing, I'm saying I'm saying you're, you're showing giving your this knowledge, you're showing the historical knowledge. Yeah, yeah. But the point, so the I'm saying is, my point is, is, is the smoking gun. Okay, my point is okay. The smoking gun. You want the smoking on, gun? Okay, smoke. it's going to take a little. It's going to take a little while because I, I can't. This I can't, is the thing. I know. Like, okay, okay. So the smoking gun is in the first century AD. A Christian was promised to become the next heir to the throne of being a Roman Emperor. So in the first century AD, there is a connection to a Christian becoming the Roman Emperor. Mm, the only, so reason, so it, the only they, reason it didn't play out like that is because of internal Roman politics and Minerva became the Emperor, who is outside that family. But originally it was agreed that Domitilla's children were next in line to become Roman Emperor and they would have been Christian because she was a saint and her husband Titius Flavius Clemens was also a Christian and Titus Flavius Clemens was associated with Saint Clement of Rome as being the same person all the way up to the 19th century. Can you tell me why that association was uh, destroyed? 
Flavius. So, so, I so Titus Flavius Clemens was understood to be Clement of Rome up to the 19th century by the Christian tradition, right? No, why, why, why? I'm asking you a question. Like I'm, I'm genuinely asking. I'm not trying to catch you up. I'm saying why? Why is that not recognised today? Okay, so I, I, let me let, let me be honest with you. Sure. I think we like, and it's not to. I'm listening yeah. to your question, and I've also listened to various points and responses. And yeah. Things. And I'm trying to work out what the topic of the conversation. So is. the topic of the conversation is that the uh, er, the early the Roman Empire, the early Roman Empire in the first century, towards the end of the first century, right, are, have Christians in their imperial household, right? So is that not an issue for you? Because the Gospels was written around, the Gospels were written around that period. So there's a period where the Gospels are written, we have church fathers like Clement of Rome, and that both things are associated with the early Roman Empire. You're trying to say that Christians were privileged. Now, you know, this is, <laughs> it's, it's, there isn't there isn't enough words to just emphasize yeah yeah that I mean I don't know what else you would want to, to know because we know prior to 70 AD we yeah. know if we, we've got information after 70 AD yeah. that Christians were not overground now we know that but they're in the imperial household no, but that doesn't, that's not... Titus Flavius yeah, Clemens see, is the again, emperor's see, great, great see, nephew. See, sorry, see, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. The funny, you mentioned, I know you mentioned collective punishment earlier. That was me, that was my fault. I know that, I know, sure, that. Sure. No, but you, you and um, Hamza, right? Sure. But this is not the same principle of collectiveness. Okay? Just because someone is part of a, an emperor household, yeah. right, as crazy as they was, yeah. right, doesn't, doesn't mean that it's a catch-all statement for all um, Messianic Jews. Now, I know, I, I like what, I mean, well, I'm not saying I like it, but it's a very sly attempt, Ty, to I'm try to, yeah, yeah, it's a sly attempt, to I'm try to truth. kind of, to tr that's not the truth, to try to say just because you have uh, one or two individuals who died as a martyr, uh, father and for a household, yeah. that pretty much the underground church, which we, we have, factual history about yeah. right we're enjoying the same lifestyle it's not true you, there's no evidence to suggest that Christians were um, not going through martyrdom yeah. when the gospels were being written I'm not denying they, they that. weren't being persecuted in fact have you not okay so I'm saying oh, guys wait, yeah, on, sure, sure. so there's a wonderful book I bet you haven't read it it's called The Fox's Book of Martyrs. Have you read it? No, I, I knew it. So I knew you didn't read that book. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not a Christian. I, I no, can't. No, yeah. You should come, come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Man. But the truth is this. Yeah. If you look at, if you read that book, Fox's yeah. Book of Martyrs, I yeah. encourage you to read it. Okay. It details exactly the question or the line of inquiry that you're making. Yeah. Because it details um, first century Christians all the way, you know, it gives a very, basically a very long time span of how Christians were persecuted under Rome, under various um, um, Our, um, countries, yeah. um, societies, communities. So you're, the, 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 if you are trying to infer that there was some sort of privilege that Christians had, you're wrong because history shows us, which is what Islam shies away from, Islam runs away like Usain Bolt. It runs away like Linford Christie from history, from historical facts. So why we, we jump, I thought we so, agreed to this topic. So, so there isn't anything, like I said, historical about the Zabur. Where's the Zabur? Where Where is the Book of Moses? Yeah, but why? Okay. No, all I'm saying. All I'm saying. All I'm saying is. So okay. Where, hang on. Hang on. I'm so, saying. So, so what I'm trying to say. What yeah, I'm trying to say sure. is, you mentioned about the historicity yeah. of the Gospels. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We have thousands upon thousands of manuscripts. Okay. In fact, if you apply the same principle of why. Um, uh, what's his name? Caesar existed. You know Caesar. He yeah. wrote a book called Gaelic Wars. Sure. There's only ten manuscripts of Gaelic Wars yeah. that are good. Yeah, yeah. The Bible has over twenty-five thousand manuscripts that are good. 
thousands of what, when are they dated of i'm saying no, i'm no, saying no, okay, okay no, 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 no. you're talking about the history and i'm giving yeah. you actual tangible facts yeah i'm giving you actual tangible facts i'm giving you actual the, tangible that facts the that the emperor titus's niece Domish, domitilla was a christian she was inherited her children were to inherit the roman empire right I'm giving these are no, but even if look, look, but you're making it like it's a catch according to the ch no, but church she, tradition. I'm no, going but, by the church tradition. Know the best, so I'm saying so we know even if you even if you even if I say yes, 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 time. Yeah, yeah. We know that the only hem emperor, to be quite honest, yeah, that was I would say anywhere near favorable, right, was Constantine. I don't know. But I'm saying under Titus and Vespasian, they never implemented any persecution. How is Titus? And, how are Titus and Vespasian not favorable? towards Christians if they never implemented any persecution no, and they allowed their children uh, like the grandchildren to become Christian okay. that's favorable towards Christians okay so what was the was the church at the time were they overground or underground okay the church the church it, uh, nice you mentioned that the church the symbol they used to use as an indication that they're Christian one of the symbols they used was the dolphin and anchor which is the house symbol of the Flavian dynasty no but Look, so they're so using the symbol of the emperor. The You're talking about symbology. Yeah, I'm asking yeah. you, was the church during that time, yeah. were they overground or underground? Sure, even if they were underground, no, they were associating to, themselves with the emperor. No, but, come on, Ty. Yeah, yeah. Ty. I like the fact that you've dived into this line of history. Yeah. I think you should certainly look at the Christian history regarding that time. Yeah. But the question to you, Ty, is this. Were they overground or underground? Yeah, sure, I, I, I'm happy to agree that a lot of them are underground. But I'm saying, okay. I'm talking so, about the imperial no, but, household. No, but I'm talking about the imperial talking about household. The imperial household yeah. who didn't do anything for the underground church. So they did do stuff for just, the underground you church because you just because yourself. You know why you I, I'm yourself? saying I'm saying I'm happy to say they were underground. That's okay, what I'm so, saying. I'm not saying so, they were okay, definitely so, underground. So Ty, I'm you, not saying they were definitely no, no, underground. Okay. Sure. You've admitted just now that they were yeah. underground. I said they I'm happy to accept happy, if they were okay. underground. So I'm not happy, saying they were. So you're happy to accept yeah. that they were underground. I'm okay. saying I'm happy to accept if they were underground that they were underground. I'm not saying I'm going to fight a point for no reason. I'm saying where's the proof that they were underground under 70 to 90 AD? Where's the proof? You're saying No, no, you've accepted it. No, I'm saying I'm saying, where is the proof? I'm saying, you where is the proof that they were underground from no, 70 no, to 90 no, no, If they no, we were, then I'm Fox's, happy. Fox's okay, book of sure, sure, okay. Fox's but the Fox's Book of Martyrs, book of Martyrs why can't you list me a martyr from 70 to 90 no, if we, you're so no, well no, read no, in it? No, no, no. They, it talks about what martyrs went through from that point on. Ben, Look, but, I, I'm but, saying but, no, but under so, Nero, there was martyrs. So, under so Domitian, Vest there was martyrs. So, so during, where is the martyrs under Vespasian so, and so Titus? So during Vespasian, because they're underground, they get killed, it's unclassified, people don't care, it's a bit like the Holocaust. When they, when they, but you when have the martyrs died, from before then. When the Jews died, but you have martyrs from under. Names. You have martyrs from a hey. much worse time under Nero. So why don't you have martyrs under? Listen, Vespasian and not, you're not going to take notes of every single martyr's name. Let's be okay, honest. Sure. But anyway, the point is Vespasian and Titus. Right. The yeah. point is this: if they were so favourable, yeah. why didn't the church become overground? Okay. So Vespasian, why did they stay underground? Vespasian and Titus, their house symbol was the Apollo Dolphin and the Apollo Anchor, right? I know you're showing your knowledge, Ty, but the point is yeah. you have to answer specifically the question. Yeah. Why did the underground church yeah. stay underground? I'm not saying, I am saying, I'm not, saying I'm saying was Domatilla underground? She was a proud Christian. She had a catacomb. So the catacombs of Domatilla, right? That's, no, the catacombs that's, of Domatilla have do. Christian iconography all over it, right? Yeah, but, but that, yeah. wait, yeah, but, no, I, I Ty, don't be sly there. I I'm know what you're trying slide. to say, catacombs were normal. But the point is this, right? Underground church. Yeah. Why didn't they become overground church? There's, it's for a uh, reason. Look, I never said and, and the also, entire Roman the way, Emperor was, Empire was Christian. I'm I, saying the Roman household, yeah. the imperial household of Vespasian and Titus was favorable towards Christians. No, I'm not saying Vespasian and Titus were Christian. I'm that saying- contradicts, That no. contradicts the very people that she's supposed to be affiliated with. Now, the point is, the point I'm making is, you have someone, yeah. based on your point, yeah. um, from, let's say, royal emperor blood. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Right? And you're insinuating that there was some sort of privilege, which factually, I'm sure when people do their homework, you're going to find zero privilege, yeah? Especially with Vespasian and Titus. Because Roman culture at the time was paganism and they hated shoot Christians. So they Christians were on the ground. Like I said, they were the poo okay. on people's feet. Now, but hold on, hold on, hold on. The, and the point is this. And it's a very pertinent question, actually. Yeah. Actually, quite simple. It's not difficult. 
The question is this. You have so-and-so sitting um, within the emperor echelons. Yeah. Why was the underground, why was okay. the underground church staying what was, underground? What was, why? okay, Vespasian and Titus no were, okay, can you, can you let me explain? Sorry, let okay, me. Vespasian and Titus were really allied with the god Apollo, right? So Nero built a massive statue of himself. Vespasian and Titus turned that into the statue of Apollo, right? So there's a figure of Apollo which is very prevalent for Vespasian and Titus, yeah? So the early church used the symbols of Apollo right to indicate safe spaces for themselves yeah so i'm saying vespasian and titus were you were their symbols were used by the early church to indicate safe spaces so there's clearly a link between the early church and the roman emperor household i'm not saying the entire roman empire was favorable towards christians i'm not saying that at all i'm saying that the roman emperor's household was so the Roman Emperor's household in the first century, a dynasty of Roman Emperor's households was favorable towards early Christians in the first century. For how long? Yeah, for 20 years, I'm saying roughly. <laughs> 20 years? Yeah, yeah. and those 20 oh years, those 20 years 20 is when the Gospels years. was written. Those no 20 way. years what, are dated okay, as being, so I'm saying Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, right? Okay, so they can be dated okay, to between okay, 70 okay. and 90 AD. Okay, now, now we're getting into the meat of it. Sure. Finally. Yeah. Now, okay, so. Okay, so what's your point about the Gospel of Matthew? Okay, so yeah. are you saying to me that Matthew did not write the Gospel of Matthew? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so where's your evidence? Well, first of all, it's known as the Gospel according to Matthew for like the first two centuries, right? Okay, so, okay, now. Isn't, okay, so, so why would it be called the gonna, Gospel now, according now, to Matthew? Now, you're going to I'm not, I'm not I, saying, I, 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 sure, go. You're going to bury yourself now, Sure. honestly. Because you're stepping on, um, you're stepping on stones you shouldn't be stepping on. Okay. Now, I'm not, I'm not. You tell me. Yeah, sure. You tell me where we get the earliest words of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Where do we get the earliest words? Look, I'm saying, well, when no. do you think, when do you think the Gospel of Matthew is dated? That's all I'm asking. The question, wait, 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 what? I know you're running now. No, you I'm said, I'm oh, I'm oh, uh, Godhead, you know, you're scared. Now you're scared. Okay, well, wait, now say, you say, your say it to me, say it to me. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> No. Okay, okay, with respect to that. Yeah, sure. I thought we were yeah. keeping it civil. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just playing. Okay, so, so... It hasn't me. been civil so far. But okay. But yeah, you carry on, carry on, carry on. Sorry, so, let's keep it, let's keep it... I just want to be very, very clear with the question. Sure. Where do we get the earliest words of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Well, it depends. You can approach that question from many ways, right? So... Okay, if you want to approach it from the Christian context, right? So I'm saying we have like P52, we have P52 in the John Rylands Library, which is a fragment of the Gospel of John, which is the earliest datable um, New Testament manuscript, like fragment, right? I think it's dated don't to around going, 125 keep going, keep going, keep going. AD. So I'm saying, I'm saying, if that's what you're trying to allude to, then that's that. No, okay, so, okay, you're, okay, so. Ah, oh, this is so funny. No, no I mean, okay. your question's okay, not clear, me, right? No, no, what, question, what do you mean, what do you mean? The question is clear, the yeah. question is clear. So, so, you're saying, okay, yeah. anyway. Okay, so I believe the Gospel of Matthew was written by the disciple Matthew. Okay. okay. I believe the um, Gospel of Mark was written by Mark. The Gospel of John was written by John. Yeah. Uh, the Gospel no. of um, uh, uh, you know, Luke was written by Luke. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you look at the writing style, it makes sense. So Matthew focused on the Jews. You can see it because of the genealogy that mm -hmm. you see in there. Um, that kind of knowledge, I'm, I'm, you know, you're only going to really get it from someone who's educated, um, and somebody who has um, um, credibility and um, someone who was close to Jesus. I mean, if you look at the Gospel of Matthews, yeah. you can see things of like references to provinces, to bodies of water, yeah. to towns, yeah. um, and, 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 you know, and, and certain Jewish customs that only somebody that is Jewish would know. Okay. Um, and also. And someone. Okay, so Vespasian and Titus, they have familiarity with Jerusalem. They have familiarity with Palestine. No, they, no, they do, they do. Because they invaded Palestine and Jerusalem. So, so, so where you, yeah, exactly. So, so they've okay, been so, to all so, these sites like Galilee, to Jerusalem, so they've you, been to all of yeah, this. But what you're, 
what, where you're going. The right? Roman Empire would have been familiar with that at the time. Where you, what you're getting, what you're not, what you're not um, sort of um, picking up. On. Yeah, picking up yeah. is that the the gospel has been written in multiple languages. So you've got Coptic, Syriac, yeah, um, all all over the world, Latin, Greek, Aramaic. Yeah. Okay. So how do you get? Hold on. How do you get Finnish? Yeah. Of manuscripts from diverse languages, you match them up together, and they're saying pretty much the same thing. You're talking about stuff from like hundred years later. I'm talking about in no. 70 to 90 AD. No, no copies. Right. I just no, want to know one thing. No, I just, thing. I just want to know one hold thing. On, hold on. You know what a manuscript is? Right? Yeah. It's effectively a handwritten witness statement. Yeah. Effectively. Yeah. Okay. But you don't have any from 70 to 90 AD. So okay. why is this an so, argument? So. You should be even more humble, actually, Ty, because when we go to the Quran, yeah. where do you get the words of Jesus? Yeah, from the Quran. This is the bit that you Wait, no, 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 why are you, why no, are you no, jumping? Why are you jumping? No, because Wait, hang on, hang on. Muslim. Let's stick on this. Yeah, yeah, Muslim, absolutely. Or you, you become a Christian. No, I'm humble. Okay, Muslim. you're Muslim. Okay, but can, can so, I, can so I, can I mention... Can, your words from? Can, can I mention something? Can I mention something? Okay. Now you're going to be... 70 to 90... Uh, where's the whole point? We agreed to history of the Gospels. And you're running away from the topic. No, no. So, 70 to 90 AD. Why would you 70 to 90 AD. I am giving the Islamic perspective. Okay, so tell us where you get the words of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah, from the Quran. No. Yeah. Where does the Quran get the words of the Lord Jesus Christ? From Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It's His word, right? Okay. So, do you know that? Well, you, why are you running away? No, you're no, running no, away. No, I'm no. not going to let You're you run away. I'm not going to. No, no. We do not agree to talk fact. about this. No. I'm not running away. No. We agree no. off camera to thing. talk about the character of the Prophet, Muslim, which we talked about, and we talked about. You're giving your perspective. No, you're on worried. The you don't want this. Christians know that you're trying to suppress this information, and they're aware of this now. Is the gospel in the Quran? The gospel, as in the one, like it's not plural gospel. It's the gospel, no, the Injil. Yeah, no, okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so you yeah. have, so you quote it in your Quran. So yeah. me, me asking. No, no, but not the New Testament books. I'm not talking about the Gospels no, but as being quoted gospel in the Quran. Mean? What does gospel, gospel mean? means like um, evangelium is like a reference to the good news, right? No. Yeah, that's what it means. No. No, you ask good, me what it means. Good, you don't even know what it means. I know what it means. Trust it means me. the good news. It, no, that's the end product. It, the gospel basically means the historical account of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's what gospel. Yeah, but the Quran means. is talking about so that's the gospel, the good news, Evangelium. No. Yes, bro, it is. See, no, no, hang on, hang on, listen, hang on. This you're, is what I'm you're... saying. This is what I'm saying. No, no. The Quran has a different gospel. No, and it doesn't. Mentioned that. He okay. said it in. Um, I believe he said it in his. In Paul, his the person that says to he a Jew, says, I'm a Jew; to a Christian, I'm a Christian. So says, how can you trust this character? Even but an I, angel of light. Okay. Right, can be an angel of darkness. Yeah. Right. So, so if they give you another gospel, yeah, let them be accursed. Yeah. What is in the Quran is an accursed gospel. So even if it's from an angel, it's no, a curse. No, from Gnosticism. No, but no. You, you, what you just said now is like even if it's from an angel, it's a curse. And I know according what to angel? your theology, that, no, no, according we, to your theology, angels, angels can angel fall, Gabriel. right? So if, if it, according to your own theology, angel Gabriel can fall. No, but do you believe? Yeah, no, but according to your own theology, angel Gabriel can fall because fall it says he even if fall. another angel or creatures. Fell. No, but. According to your theology, angels can fall, right? Angels they can, they can, fall. they can separate no, do you mean from like God. Who made yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so, so I'm saying family. even so, you can't 100%. Oh. So you can't 100% say it's not Angel Gabriel because according to your theology, angels can go against God. Angels. That's that's my point. That's my point to you. That's my point to you that the angel that gave the gospel, the, the apparent gospel, to Muhammad, that guy, that guy. That, that, that angel no, no, but, okay. is we're, we're digressing. We're digressing That's from right. the point. You don't want to stick no, to the point. The point explain. is no, you that, okay, for the Christians that are listening, the words of the Lord Jesus not, he Christ, doesn't want you to hear this. The imperial household had Christians in the first century. The Emperor Domitian promised Domitilla, the Emperor Domitian promised Domitilla that her children Ty. can become Ty Roman emperor, right? So you could have had a Christian emperor, a Christian Roman emperor the in the first century AD. There you, go. you could have had a Christian Roman emperor in the first According century the AD. The Emperor, the emperor of Vespasian, the Emperor of Vespasian and the Emperor Titus, the right, had Christians in their household. The Gospels can be timed between 70 to 90 AD. So there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm just finishing. Okay. He's not. He doesn't want this information out there. So we can bring it here. Okay. So he's scared. He's scared. Okay. So 
Yeah, yeah, okay. Gnosticism in the Quran. Okay, um, okay. So the emperor, the, there's no persecution that is noted by any Roman historian of note before the third century. Okay, so there's no. Yeah, sorry, he, he's just talking in the background. So there's no. Um, I'm proposing there's no major persecution of early Christians under Vespasian and Titus, right? The Gospels can be timed between 70 and 90 AD, which is the reign of Vespasian and Titus. The Emperor Vespasian's granddaughter was a Christian. She's Saint Domitilla, according to their own tradition. Um, she married Titus Flavius Clemens, who is also recognized as being a Christian sometimes by their tradition and is sometimes linked to Clement of Rome, right? So what I'm saying is that their whole martyrdom tradition is a massive smokescreen covering Vespasian and Titus's reign, where there's no persecution. The Gospels are written during this period. Um, the Emperor's niece, Emperor Domitian's niece, is a Christian. So there's clearly a connection between the early church, right, and the Christian tradition. And I'm saying, come to Islam, the Gospels are all in conjecture, just like it says in the Quran, the Gospels are full of conjecture. And anything I've good, anything that I've said is that is good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and any mistakes I've made is from myself. Thank you.